Hi, I'm Daz, G7STC. Today's video is a little bit about amateur television reception. A friend of mine, who's a radio ham up in Norfolk, um, he asked me, um, could I just explain some of the connections and things you may find behind a satellite, um, sat analog satellite receiver that you may use for um, receiving analog uh, television repeaters. So um, this is going to be a little bit about that and just explaining the leads and connections. I have a collection here of satellite receivers and also a satellite receiver designed exclusively for amateur television. It's this unit here. It's called a Dove. It was made many years ago and it was actually a kit, I believe. Here's something typical you might find in the late 80s, a late 80s satellite receiver. And here's something a little bit more modern that you might find perhaps in the uh, early 90s. But they're all analog receivers, so... Um, they all can be pushed into use. Perhaps you may need to do some modifications, but I'll come to that later. Right, we're looking at the back of the receivers now. And the first connector I'm going to start with, I think, be a good one to start with, is actually where you connect your RF input or your signal from the aerial. It's located here, here, and here on these receivers. The connector type is called an F connector. Um, because satellite in the early days was quite often receivers come from America, F connectors were employed. F connectors are quite widely employed in America, but um, in the UK it's only usually on satellite receivers that they're, they are actually utilised. Now, I was asked the question, how do you transfer from this to something amateur radio? Well, it is possible to buy adapters. This one is an N plug to an F. This one is a BNC to an F, and just for completeness, this is just a short F lead that I've made myself. So by using adapters and leads, and try to use the minimum amount of leads, you can connect to this input connector here, here, and here. Now we'll look at how you get the video signal out. In the case of this satellite receiver, this is called a SCART connector. This is a SCART lead, as you can see it has 21 pins. This lead is capable of carrying many, many signals, but in this case all we're worried about is video and audio. So quite simply, this plugs into here, like so, and that plugs into the, the television monitor you're using. So that's relatively simple, so that's nice and simple. Now we'll come to discrete leads. This is a discrete composite lead. The yellow is used to carry the video signal and the red and white are to carry the uh, left and right audio signals. In the case of this receiver it's marked video, audio and composite. Composite is not something we need to worry about. Um, it was something that would have been used in the past for decoders but Video and audio, so yellow goes into video, and because this is not stereo, I just choose to use the red one for the audio, so and it goes there in the socket marked audio. Now you might be wondering, what about if you've got a receiver like this, and you need to plug it into a receiver that's got a SCART? Well that's quite simple as well, you can get these adapters. There's several different types available. Some have a switch which enables them to work on an input or an output signal, or some in this case, I can get it in the light, it's marked out. So this is designed to go into a receiver and then that end go into a television. But that's the basic types of connections that you'll find on an analog satellite receiver. Now I just want to talk a little bit about satellite receivers and their gain. A satellite receiver is designed to be worked with a low noise block. This is device here. This is on the dish and it contains a microwave aerial but it also contains a local oscillator to mix the high frequency which is typically 10, 11 gigahertz down into a IF range and that frequency is generally around 950 megahertz to about 2 gigahertz. Now because this is a converter it also contains some gain. So if we're not using this because we're not receiving satellite television we're going to need to replace that gain. And of course you'll notice this one actually says 
IF input, intermediate, intermediate frequency input. Now, in order to make up this gain, um, there's a couple of things we can do. Um, if you're not too far away from a, a repeater or the signal source, these line amplifiers can be useful. These plug between your aerial and the um, satellite receiver and provide a certain amount of gain. I can't see the gain on this one, but they're typically around 20 uh, dB, and that helps make up for the gain you lost because you haven't got an LMB. Um, they're okay, but they're a little noisy, so they're not ideal, but they can be useful. But another point I want to make here is that there's power on this socket. Because the LMB contains electronics, it's normally powered up the coax or cable. So you have to be careful not to short this output power out because the satellite receivers tend to get grumpy. And in fact, some will blow up if you short it out. So what you can do is with this amplifier, if you was using this amplifier, the as you can see, there's a choke here showing that the power actually goes from one side to the other. Now, if we didn't want the power to be going up in the aerial, we can use something here. And uh, if I can just get this to focus please please focus just about it's got a voltage block if I screw this to the RF input here like so it now means you can connect an aerial here the radio signal can go through but the 13 or 18 volt power signal cannot come back out so it's safe to connect an aerial and this end will go here and this satellite receiver will actually power this preamp. So you can put this preamp right next to the aerial um, because the losses at 23 centimeters, for instance, are, are very, very high. Oop. Just dropping everything on the floor. This is a two stage preamp I made. Um, it was made from a mini kit. Um, and this has two stages and the gain of this is around about 30 dB and it works very well. Again, um, this has facility to be powered so this can connect directly to the satellite receiver and be powered remotely. And the aerial can go straight in, the inside preferably. And uh, that will do the job quite nicely as well. But the only problem with a wide band amplifier on a satellite receiver is it doesn't like out of band signals. So quite often you may need to add a filter if you're near to a cellular or mobile phone transmitter. Okay, so I've got a simple setup here. I'm using the very old receiver. So I've got video connected to the yellow connector and audio connected to the red connector. Then I've got video in connected to the yellow connector on the monitor and audio in connected to the red one. Because we're working mono, the white connector is not used in this case. Now I'll just look at the RF input side of things and uh, some backlash on my tripod, the looks of it. Okay, so the input to the satellite receiver is connected to the out on the preamp. The input, the preamp, I have this power breaker have a short length of lead then have an adapter to get us to N and that's suitable for connecting to an aerial and receiving signals if you're not too far from the uh, transmitter so that's a nice simple setup quite inexpensive as well but as I said it's you've got to have, you've got to be fairly close to the transmitter to get a decent signal from that okay so I've rigged up a a very low power test transmission so we should be able to just tune that in now there we go now another little point I wanted to make is a satellite receiver is normally designed to pick up a 27 megahertz wide satellite signal now amateur television tends to be narrower than that around about 15 megs so you might find that the pitch is a little dull and not so bright you may be able to compensate it <laughs> getting a little bit of reflections here, <laughs> me moving around the room. Um, you may find that you need to increase the video gain. Now, I've been lucky and managed to find the right pot in, the, in, in a satellite receiver, but if you don't want to do that, you could use a video enhancer if you could find one, 
Or another good method to increase the video signal if you find it a little weak from the satellite receiver is if you've got an old VCR laying around, video recorder. Because if you feed a signal through a video recorder, they tend to have an automatic gain control and that will increase it. But try turning the contrast and uh, brightness up and see if you can get a reasonable signal. But if not, you need to alter the satellite receiver or you need to put some sort of video amplifier from the output of the satellite receiver. Okay then, so what I've done is I've um, put the uh, other satellite receiver on. Now this one has not had any modifications done to the video output. And I'm sure you can see that the colours look a little bit on the dim side, but notice that I'm able to lift it up with the contrast and brightness controls. That's not too bad. So, you know, in many ways you could probably get away without having to use a video amplifier. Um, but if you're well up on electronics you may be tempted to alter the satellite receiver if it's got a preset for turning the video gain up. Little additional bit I forgot to mention we've got a digital receiver here if the receiver is set for a 10 gigahertz local oscillator in its menu which was standard then before we had dual band LMBs you'll notice that if you ignore the one there's the frequency 1249 and that's um, spot on, that's uh, within the amateur television band and uh, so you can get a useful frequency read out there but the LMB setting needs to be set at 10 gig. This is just a short video, I'm not going to go into details how you set a satellite receiver up. Okay, here's a couple of aerials for 23 centimeters. The one at the top is a commercial aerial and this one at the bottom here um, something I made from a design on the internet, it's a bow tie. Um, horizontal polarisation is the way it is up now in this uh, video. So yeah, so you could get started quite cheaply if you're not too far from a transmitter and you don't need um, a lot of gain if you made the uh, aerial at the bottom, so that's pretty good. Sorry about the outside noises, but anyway, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you found this interesting.